Hi. This is the first part of a multi-video series about user interface frameworks, graphical user interface frameworks for Go. And today I'm going to start with a framework you probably heard of. Um, the developer was very active uh, recently. So it's called Fine. And let me go to the website. Here it is. Um, it uh, is not drawing native uh, controls, so it's not using operating system provided controls. It's drawing everything on its own canvas, but it still has a dependency on Seago, uh, which is uh, hard to avoid because it needs the to create the initial window. I think it uses some, well, it depends on the platform which underlying layer it uses, but it basically renders to canvas canvases directly to the window directly. Um, and draws its own controls. Now let me quickly show you how a program created in with this framework looks like. Here's my little admin panel. I showed that earlier in another video. So you have edit fields, you have some validation for them. So this check mark means that it's okay. So if I change this, then there's a little error message here. Now one little problem is that this is error-based, so you basically supply a function that returns nil or an error. But errors are not generally localized, so uh, I had to localize the errors here, which is crazy. But other than that, um, that works fine. As you can see, the validation works fine. Validation is super important, I think. Here you have multi-line edit fields. You can create lists. Um, you have little dialogues you can open. Um, it's not really multi-window uh, in the sense that it's always one window that is created, that is the operating system window. The rest is drawn above this window. So you cannot really have multiple main windows. Other than that, yeah, it has com the common user interface elements. Let me show you the demo real quick. So that's, I think, you can see already there is a problem. I will talk about that later. Okay, here's the demo. Yeah, you can see the demo. I make it a little bit larger. You have widgets like accordion and a little activity indicator, buttons of all sorts. Uh, then what they call a card, all kinds of text entries, single line, multiple line, and you can have validation. You can also restrict it to, say, numbers here in this case, right? Um, you have forms with uh, simple dialogues that can be associated with them. So you can create a form dialog, uh, but the layout is very limited here. You have, well, input, you have progress bars, and um, some limited form of rich text. So you can display rich text to some extent. Um, it has some markdown parsing, so you can display markdown as rich text, but it's quite limited in the sense that you cannot add inline images. And also important to know is that the glyphs, uh, the Unicode glyphs, in the rich uh, text and also in the edit fields in general are kind of limited. So you, do, you only have a limited support and not all of them. So if you want a particular glyph and it's not supported, say a particular emoji, then you are out of luck. So that's a bit of a problem. Also, you cannot mix fonts. You can change the base font, but you cannot mix fonts. So that is also a limitation right now. Okay, now, other than that, it's uh, a neat little um, framework. Here you can see it has performant tables. It can display trees, even though unfortunately this layout is not easy to change. And it's not particularly appealing to my eye, I guess. The developer thinks otherwise. 
these arrows are horrible. Um, and it also has a few other layout features that make it uh, suitable for mobile development. Um, there is also some extension classes, not classes, I mean structs um, and composition, that allow you to get a little bit more flexible design for mobile applications. Now, I'm using this. Um, I think it's a neat framework. What do I think um, about it? In summary, I would say it's nice for small applications uh, that don't have very high requirements. Uh, you are limited to material design, so you can change the theming, you can change the padding, you can change the colors, you can change the base font, but you cannot um, add shadows and the controls will always be flat. So if you're fine with that, okay, but someday, I guess, material design will be completely out of fashion, then you're locked in with this kind of flat design. So if you like flat design with almost no indication of, or almost no, you know, uh, 3D effects and so on, then uh, you should be fine with it. Otherwise, um, you can try drawing your own widgets, of course. You can create your own layouts and your own widgets, but then you basically that would be reinventing the wheel. So it's material design only. Right. Um, so there are a few drawbacks um, that I haven't mentioned yet. So I think my biggest quirk with the framework is the localization feature that was recently added. I think that was a bad idea, but that's just my personal opinion about it. So the localization is entirely dynamic and that is a huge problem. So I show you, you put the localization and their key as strings in a JSON file. Here's, for instance, my German localization of my little admin panel. So the problem is this is all at runtime. So if you get one key wrong, then the localization will not be found and it will fall back to the default language. So that will usually be English. Now, that seems like a small issue, but in reality, I have experience with that. I made the same mistake various times in other languages. So I've implemented my own localization systems, say in Racket, for instance, and I made the same mistakes of making make mistake of making it dynamic. And the problem with that is, you really want to know whether the key is correct at compile time, because generally speaking all user-facing arrows should be localized, right? Can't have an English error if the application is in French. So if the error message is for the user, it needs to be localized. But there are so many error paths. So if you have any kind of realistic, a little bit more complex application, you will have lots of error paths and you cannot test them. It's just impossible to test all these keys. Uh, because of the error paths, and also you cannot uh, test all execution paths reliable, reliably. Sorry. So from that perspective, you will probably have lots of incorrect keys, and there is currently no tool to check at compile time that the keys are correct. It's all runtime. So that was a bad idea, I think. Other than that, I would say... It's a nice framework. Uh, the author is very responsive. He has his own Discord channel and usually hangs around there. And if, when he has time, he will help you directly, which is unprecedented, I think. Um, maybe he's going to run out of time when more and more people adopt this framework. But right now he's quite responsive. Ob ob obviously, I mean, he, his time is limited and also he's quite opinionated. So if you have a particular feature request and he doesn't like it, then he will just reject it. But that's um, his choice and, of course, his right, since he's the person developing it primarily. So, yeah, that was Fune. 
And would I recommend it? Yes, as I said, it's okay for small apps, but it has almost no system integration on mobile platforms. So if you need intents on Android devices, for instance, you shouldn't use it. It's not going to work because right now it doesn't allow you to define intents. So if you need to share data, have other applications interact with your application, or have your inter uh, application interact with other applications you wrote, it's not going to work with the current version of Fine. Maybe later. Right? And there are many other platform features that are not integrated. You cannot, for instance, access the camera or anything like that. Okay, so that's it. Um, that was fine. And now next time I'm going to talk about a very large framework that you probably also know, and that is Qt, or as some call it, Qt. And I will talk about the Go bindings for that and the license requirements for those. Okay, hope you found this useful and see you next time. Bye.